coming back to uh, the um, you know, operating system, mm -hmm. sometimes I wonder if your priority is, let's say, teaching and you know, engaging minds of students, let's say, and there are other ways to do it. Maybe we could spend less time in this fee matrix thing and spend more time in... Yeah, we're totally doing that in the United States in a stupid way. We're destroying a health care system and trying to build it over again. So the point is very accurate. You don't ever get rid of the old matrix. And it, one of the big mistakes people make is they try to get rid of the old matrix, which is counterproductive. You must analyze and strategically intend your moves. Otherwise, you're wasting a lot of time. Excellent. Give her a hand. Thank you. Yeah. As was talking about, this isn't just changing for change, just to change. But what is it that would be more helpful, make it more productive? And, and you do have to prioritize for that, too. Otherwise, you can spend a lot of energy not getting anywhere. So, but with the revelating part of this, what people find they're able to assess or analyze, critically think about what does need to be changed, what doesn't, and put their energies in the right place. The, let me, I'll just give you a little on the neuroscience of rematricing. We've been talking about it some. Rematricing takes advantage of the neuroplasticity of our minds, of our brains. And it helps us to lay these new neural pathways. We can't unwire the matrix we already have. We can't get rid of that. What we can do is build new structures to help us grow and change. However, to do that, it's repeated conscious activity. And how many of you have ever tried to um, make a change in your life? How many of you are like, Bob, you've tried to lose weight before? I don't think there's that many of you. But yeah, sometimes, you know, it's, yeah, or I you to be fat. Oh yeah, I used to be very fat. I really did. So this one I can speak about. Before I met her. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you would have. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I realized that uh, I, I would lose weight, and then, oh, okay, I lost weight. And then I'd go back to my old habits, and the weight would go right back on. So some of you can relate to that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because what happened is I decided to lose weight. I didn't decide to do what I needed to do to keep it off the rest of my life. And that's a different matrix thing to do that. Now I have done that, and it's quite easy for me now. But it took me a while to figure that out. Um, so it is easy. I, oh, I have lot to tell you about that one. I've heard a lot. Actually, I do have a book. I have a book that helps with that. And I'm so glad I learned it. Because <laughs> I don't have to diet anymore. And that was a whole, that was a very interesting thing. And actually, matrixing helps with that because you start to change how you go about living that helps you then have better habits without having to think about it quite so much all the time if you're able to lay that, that pathway down. Um, so, it, but you can't just, um, I, I, like in the United States, I don't know how much, like we, people train to run a marathon, for example, and they get in very, very good shape to run that race, and it's wonderful, they're very physically fit. They run the race, and they stop doing the things that they did, and they get all flabby again, because they didn't determine that that was going to be the way they continue. But then what the matrix thing requires, it requires engaging, that we talked about before, but it requires a certain kind of work that we call it, that, that, that's long. It takes that 10,000 hours to really lay the track for really being, uh, to really get a new pathway to de develop mastery. And it's hard work, but it's a particular kind of hard work that different researchers call deep practice or deliberate practice. And it's related to what we talked about before. It's being willing to practice doing something a little bit hard a little bit hard to understand, a little bit outside of your comfort zone, right at the edge of your ability. And working at that is what helps you matrix and where you develop these new neural pathways. And this also relates to why you don't get burned out. This is interesting. If you're just putting in time doing the same things you've already done, that's very draining and actually tends to be very stressful. It, that actually learning, growing, staying on that edge, stretching into new material, even though that might sound kind of hard, it is, it's, it's actually much more refreshing and engaging, and it actually gives workers more energy than just doing the same things over and over and over again all the time. And ultimately, we want to be willing to rewire our brains to become the kind of people that we want to become. So I love that image. All right. And then this next, this, this next phase is very, very important to transformational leaders. Okay, so we're, uh, we're at the, at the uh, final elements. We've got yearning, engaging, revealing, 
liberating, rematrixing, and now we're getting down to dedicating. This is where a lot of people as individuals and, and companies break down. Dedication requires that we consistently apply ourselves and set up systems to keep us learning and growing. Brad Anderson, who won the uh, 2009 Transformational Leadership Award, constantly saw his job as challenging his, his business to be innovating, to be doing his uh, best buy. By the way, uh, we've had a huge sorting in the electronics business in the United States. The last big sort was a company called Circuit City that went bankrupt last year. Best Buy is the last man standing in their industry. It is a story of the most transformational leader we know. Ron Riggio, who wrote the book, has been helping us assess leaders. We haven't found a, a living business leader who can top him. Uh, his dedication was ceaseless. And uh, he was willing to pay the price. He was willing to do things that didn't work. He was willing to be criticized by his staff. He was willing to have uh, rebellion. But he did it all in a way that empowered other people to succeed and move the business forward. It's a fantastic story. But this dedicating and paying the price is critical. There's one variable that I want you to consider. What's the difference between these two boys? This one and this one. What do you think the difference is? What? Soft and hard. Well, I'll tell you, you can't tell. But one of those boys intends to be a musician, and the other one just wants to play an instrument. One intends to be a musician, the other one just wants to play an instrument. And Judith's going to tell you about the research that is amazing behind this. Well, what they found, they were trying to figure out which uh children develop into better musicians as adults, what makes a difference, who becomes a great musician. They found it's exactly what Bob was saying, the study showed that those children that said, I want to be a musician, as opposed to, mm, I'll try playing the violin, or I'll pick up an instrument and try it, those that I will be a musician, even made that decision even before they picked up a musical instrument to play. They were 400 times better than those children that just chose to kind of play with it. That commitment made a huge difference in how they learned and grew and how they developed the mastery. So much so that that dedication, they actually needed, it didn't, wasn't, they practiced the same amount of time, that wasn't the difference. It was the commitment that made the difference. And in fact, those kids, and, as, and also later as adults, that made that commitment were able to practice less and get more out of it because they were committed in using it differently. So as students, the more you intend to get out of what you're doing, the less you will have to study. Because you are studying differently. You are studying in a very pragmatic, engaged way. You are following your yearning. You are engaged. You are revelating. You will discover things more than the people that are just trying to pass tests. You will know things they didn't know. You will say things in class. You will write things in your essays that are more thoughtful. You will actually be developing yourself more efficiently at a level of, I don't know how the heck they got 400 times, but a lot more effective uh, because you are dedicated to...